want to talk a little bit about the different lines and basically explain the different things I like to use for the different presentations and why and uh, maybe it'll help you get set up with how you want to fish and a lot of it depends on what you're fishing for because if you're fishing for big pike, big northerns or salmon you may use things a little different than you would for for walleyes or for trout but each each line's got its application and in some cases some are a whole lot better than others. Now I'm going to talk about what I learned over the last 40 years basically um, and tell you what I use for jigging and for rigging and for cranking, um, precision trolling with lead core, etc. because again each one of those things has its advantages. When I first started out years and years ago with jig jigging I used to use what this is called a Berkeley sensation. Actually it's a high vis they call it the solar you can kind of see that it's a fluorescent green, green line. This is a six pound test um, I used this for a lot, a lot of years and I caught a lot of really big fish with this line because when I'm jigging I like to be able to actually watch and see my line. This is a monofilament line, um, again has worked really, really well but I've kind of moved away from that now. About 20 years ago, um, companies came out with what they call their braided line, their super lines. So uh, there's been quite a variety of Berkeley, Berkeley fire line. Um, and that's actually what I've kind of migrated to. I, now most of my jigging rods are set up with this uh, Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8 in a six pound test. Now one of the advantages of the braided lines over the monofilament lines which have been around forever is the braided lines are super super thin. In fact this six pound test braid has the equivalent of a two pound test monofilament diameter so it's a lot thinner which makes it easier to fish in the wind and in current. Um, it's not as affected as much. One thing that's maybe a downside to some degree with the fire line is there's absolutely no stretch to this line. Um, if you're going to fish with fire line, basically you want to do something that you've got to need to have a really good reel with a smooth drag that doesn't stick. You need a medium to a medium light power rod that's got some flexibility to have some give to it. So what I typically do is, is I'll use this Berkley Trilene 10 pound XT and I'll put enough backing of this on my reels, whether it's my trolling reels or my, my jigging reels that we're talking about now, so that I can then fill the spool with 100 to 125 yards of the fire line that I want to use. Um, that way I don't have to fill the whole spool with the fire line and it's a lot less expensive and I just have to replace the 125, 100 to 125 yards of the fire line that I use. I also then still also use this Berkeley fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is, is one of the newer lines. A couple things about fluorocarbon, it's got a higher specific density than the monofilament, so it actually sinks, but it's also got a little bit of stretch, not as much as the monofilament, but the other thing that's, that's unique about the fluorocarbon is it's supposedly invisible in the water, so you don't have to worry about fish being line shy. What I typically do on my jigging rods is I'll put a two or three foot section of this on, I'll put a, a, a small bead on the line with a small barrel swivel and then I'll tie about a two or three foot piece of this on and then I'll tie on the other end of that the jig or whatever it is I'm using here. Um, that way I kind of have the advantage of having an invisible line and this is 15 pound test that I use and, I, and the reason I use a 15 pound test leader is because it's a lot more abrasion resistant than the fire line. When you get into the 6.2 fire line, 6 pound test, 2 pound diameter, a little bitty nick in there, can, the line can break pretty easy. So between rocks and, and also with northerns that are going to bite you off, the fluorocarbon leader really helps reduce the amount of things that you're going to lose that way because it's a lot more abrasion resistant. So it makes for a really, really good setup and it's what I really, over the years, have learned is the best way to uh, set up a jigging rod is to set it up with the backing, the fire line. I've, over the years I've also used some of this what they call Berkeley fire line tracer. Tracer is a high vis, low vis line. Every five feet it changes from a low vis to like a fluorescent green high vis. I used that for a lot of years. This, just this last year I've gone to switch to this Ultra, car Ultra 8 carrier because it's a lot smoother. It'll cast further. Um, it's also pretty visible. So the other line that I, I use a fair amount is actually lead core line. In this case, this is an 18 pound test lead core. And basically lead core is, is a Dacron line that has uh, a lead interior or thing in the side. And I don't know if you can see this, but I've moved this, uh, this is lead core line. 
I move the sheath of this back and I pull out about maybe four inches of the piece of lead here. I'm going to break that piece of lead off and the advantage of the lead core line is I use this for what I would consider precision trolling, especially with uh, rigs or crankbaits in particular because because of the line diameter and the weight you can use crankbaits and with lead core line you can actually get a bait to run a lot deeper than normally it would run because of the weight that's in this line. So as a general rule of thumb with lead core, if, if I let out uh, three yards of lead core or three colors of lead core, which would be the equivalent of 30 yards because every color is, is a 10 yard section of line, it'll add five feet to the depth. So like say that I want to fish a crankbait down to 20 foot of water, I put out four colors of lead, I'm going to be in that ballpark. Now with lead core, as, as I said, it's a Dacron line with a lead interior. So what I do is I'll take this lead core line, I'll pull the sheath back about four or five inches here from, so I've got this piece of lead sticking out and then I'll break that, that lead off. And let the sheath of that line actually extend back out. So you've actually got the sheath of that line that's got no lead in it sticking out here. And in this case, I take the same 15 pound fluorocarbon leader that I use on my jigging and my other crank and setups. Generally take that fluorocarbon leader, slide it into the core of that Dacron sheath line, slide it all the way in there till it goes to the point where you can actually feel it hit the lead that, that I broke off. So now I've got maybe right there about four inches of that line that's up inside that Dacron do a simple overhand knot like so, and then that creates a super, super knot that you can actually reel through your line guides on your rod without a problem. And you don't only have to do one overhand knot, I generally do two just to be on the safe side, but this knot has worked really, really well. A great way for attaching a, a leader to the lead core that you can roll up through your rods without having an issue. Um, and. Uh, it's a super, super strong knot that basically you can pull on that as hard as you want and you literally can't break that knot. I think I've only broke that knot once in my entire life. So it's a super setup for tying a leader to a lead core without dealing with swivels. It's whatever works really, really well. One of the things I like to do when I got my, my lines, my reels all spooled with a new line for this year is I like to take the reels off the rod. And you'll notice that what I've done here is I've taken some of this it's actually Johnson First Aid waterproof tape. And I'll take and stick a piece of this on the, the real seat down here, and then I'll label on there what I've done. If you've got any questions or need any further information, just stop by any of the North 40 Outfitter stores or check the website at north40.com. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again. Thanks.